Hi friends, thanks for tuning in today. We're checking out the Flame Clockwork. Uh, it has the same feature set as the desktop model, except for this additional 16th note output here. So everything we go over here also goes for the desktop version too. Clockwork basically consists of three independent beat generators, uh, each which run off either the internal clock or a external MIDI clock. The simplest controls are of course the beat division selector and the gate time adjustment. At 12 o'clock, the gate is half the duration of the beat selection. So, for example, at a quarter note, with the gate at 12 o'clock, the gate time is going to be an eighth note. Turning the knob fully clockwise to hold will basically have the gate be high indefinitely. Um, turning it all the way counterclockwise to off, the gate will essentially be off, and disabling that, um, or turning that off, basically disables the, that beat generator. This next bit uh, can get a little bit complicated. When the middle selector switch for each channel is set to shift, this control uh, will allow you to offset the beat by up to half of the current beat division uh, for that generator. So for example, if the beat division is set to an eighth note, turning shift CV in either direction will offset or shift the beat ahead or back by up to a sixteenth note. This allows you to make uh, pretty cool beat specific shuffles and when you're doing this to each beat generator uh, you, you can come up with some pretty cool patterns. If the middle selector switch is set to CV then the shift CV knob controls the CV level that is output for that beat generator uh, over here. Think of it like a variable voltage level version of the gate but one that comes out a different output. The range is 0 to 5 volts uh, so it's very handy for controlling VCAs, VCO pitch, filter cutoff, um, almost like a little mini sequencer. And while it's not necessarily obvious, you can control uh, and set both either the shift or the CV. Uh, you don't have to just pick between one or the other. Uh, so for example, say you wanted to shift the beat uh, behind by a 16th note and also set uh, a specific uh, voltage offset. So the easiest way to do that is first click to shift. Uh, we're at 8th note, so all the way counterclockwise is going to bring that beat ahead by a 16th note. And now if you switch to CV, shift will have remembered the amount we just set, and you can then adjust an offset CV. Now if you were to flip back to shift at this point, shift is now going to be this value. So it's important to do one and then do the other. When you're in CV mode and you turn the knob all the way past max into LFO, you've essentially enabled the tempo-based LFO. The LFO completes one cycle within the time of the selected beat division. So for example, if we have the beat division set to a half note, then you have a half note LFO. The third, the third selector switch then determines the uh, LFO shape uh, in, the, in the upward position. It's a triangle wave. In the downward position, it's slightly different for each beat generator. Here you have a upward ramping saw, a downward ramping saw, and then this one that ramps up, then does a triangle wave, and then ramps down as a saw. One thing worth noting about the LFOs is they are quantized to the tick resolution uh, either of the internal clock or the incoming MIDI signal. Uh, so at slower tempos, there can be a noticeable stair-stepping of the voltage. Uh, you could get rid of this by running it through a lag processor, uh, or who knows, you may not even notice it, but it's worth mentioning. By now, you've probably noticed the R&D or random position of the third switch. Um, enabling this uh, allows you to randomize the shift CV and gate parameters for any particular beat generator that has this switch set to random. The important thing to remember though is that does not function if you have the LFO enabled. So make sure it's off. Once you have it set uh, to random, let's say all three, the amount of randomness is controlled by the global random knob here, which is actually bipolar. Uh, there's two separate randomization algorithms uh, available on the clockwork and uh, I don't really know how to explain them other than they're not the same, but they're both different types of random. So turning counterclockwise uh, from 12 o'clock uses more of algorithm one uh, randomization and turning clockwise uses more of randomization algorithm number two. Uh, to the left of that is the global shuffle knob. Um, and what's kind of cool about this is it's also bipolar control and allows you to shuffle eighth notes or 16th notes. So turning to the left, adds more shuffle to 8th notes, turning to the right from 12 o'clock adds more shuffle to 16th notes. 
The various outputs below that are pretty self-explanatory. At the very bottom here, you have individual CV outs for uh, beat generators one, two, and three. Above that, the gate outputs for each. And above that is the sum outputs for the gate and for the CV, and then this clock output. Uh, now the manual describes this as a sum of the CV and gate sum, but uh, in practice it doesn't really seem like that unless I'm missing something. Uh, what it is more like is a sum of the gate outputs, but generated as triggers. So even if all these gates are set to hold, you get a little trigger pulse out of clock every time each one fires off, uh, which is pretty handy because it's uh, basically the perfect clock version of the gate output. Lastly, there's the dedicated 16th note MIDI output, as well as the MIDI to CV converter outputs. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into the MIDI CV function here, because uh, there's enough complexity just with the main features of the clockwork. It works well enough uh, if you need uh, you know, a serious, like more than one note, or more than just gate for note on and, and pitch out. I'd, I'd suggest something like the, the dope for one, or... Uh, the Kenton MIDI to CV converters, but this does get the job done. Oh yeah, and then there's the record switch. This is probably one of the cooler features of the clockwork, um, and it allows you to record any alterations that you make to the shift CV knob and the gate knob over the course of two measures. Even though the changes to the beat controls are not recorded, uh, this feature more than makes up for the lack of any external voltage control over the module. Um, but let's go over exactly how record works because it's slightly non-intuitive. When the record switch is up, the clockwork is constantly recording and retaining any changes that you make to the shift, CV, and gate controls uh, over the course of two measures. When the switch is flipped down, the changes that were recorded start playing back uh, and looping over the last two measures. Uh, and most importantly, the shift CV and gate controls are now disabled and they have no effect on the sound. It's strictly playing back uh, from what it recorded. This type of configuration can seem really weird at first, but uh, I quickly realized that it's rather clever because you don't have to think about recording ahead of time. Uh, since you're always recording data during the normal operation, all you have to do is flip the switch down uh, once you've done something that you, you like. Um, so for example, let's say you were tweaking and oh, that sounded cool. Well, then you would normally have to get ready, do it again um, when you've enabled the record mode. Uh, with this type of configuration, once you've made some cool tweaks, all you do is flip that switch down and it's automatically looping. Uh, it's kind of similar to those uh, features that DAWs have where they're always recording some amount of MIDI data or audio data and you can grab it in case you miss something cool. You can also punch in new changes. Um, so let's say we've you know, done some tweaks over two bars, uh, two measures, uh, flip down the record switch and it's playing back. At any point you can flip the switch up, make some quick tweaks, flip the switch back down again, and essentially you've done a quick punch over your, uh, your existing recording. Oh, and remember, only the shift CV and gate controls are disabled when the recording switch is down and you're, you're playing back the loop. You can still have random uh, randomization of those recorded parameters, shuffle, and you can still change uh, the beat divisions. So it's a really cool way to add some dynamic uh, changes to your, to your clock signals, as well as still have the control over changing beat divisions, randomization, and, and all that tempo as well. All right, let's jump over to the part two video to see this thing in action.